Fermat's little theorem is such a great theorem. It allows us to find a remainder when we divide a huge number by a prime number. And it's so helpful because it's usually such a huge number that we can't even use our calculator. So let's go ahead and start with a small number so you can first see how it works and so that we can do the arithmetic in our head, but the power of the theorem really lies in allowing us to work with huge numbers, but we'll get to that in just a bit. So first, what is Fermat's little theorem? Well, Fermat's little theorem looks like this. A to the power of P minus one is congruent to one in mod P. And mod is the modulo. It's a lot like working with remainders. We are finding the remainder. When we talk about mod p, we are finding the remainder when p divides into a to the power of p minus one. Now to use Fermat's little theorem, p has to be a prime number. Furthermore, the greatest common divisor between a and p must be one, meaning that a and p have no common factors other than one. So let's take a look at an example first where we can do the arithmetic in our head. For example, let's say I wanted to work with the prime number five. And let's have an a value of two. So one example is that two to the power of five minus one must be congruent to one in mod five. And this does work because p, which here is five, is prime and the greatest common divisor between two and five is equal to one. And we can see here then that two to the power of four must be congruent to one in mod five. And it sure is because two to the fourth is equal to the number 16. And when we divide 16 by five, we get three with a remainder of one, which is what Fermat's little theorem will tell us. So now let's use a huge number, so big that even our calculator couldn't even compute it. How about what is two to the power of 502 in mod five? And go ahead and try it. Even try to type that in the graphing calculator, two to the power of 502, and the calculator can't even compute it because once again, that number is so large. So what could we do here? Well, we could use Fermat's little theorem, which tells us that two to the power as, as we just learned, five minus one must be congruent to one in mod five. So only if we could rewrite two to the power of 502 using two to the power of four. Because we know that that is congruent to one in mod five. So the first thing I would do is figure out, well, two to the fourth, four goes into 500 and to 125 times, that would be two to the power of 500. So then I would have two squared left over. So I'm going to come over here and write then two to the power of 502 must be congruent to what in mod five? Two to the power of 502 is the same as two to the fourth to the power of 125 times two squared. So I'm wondering what is this congruent to in mod five? Well, we already realized with this example that two to the power of four in mod five is congruent to one in mod five. So then from here I can see that one to the power of 125 is one times four. So that must be congruent to four in mod five. So the answer, what is two to the power of 502 in mod five? The answer is four. And that's for Ma's little theorem. I love this because it allows us to do something that the calculator cannot, which is pretty powerful. So once again, Fermat's little theorem tells us that a to the power of p minus one is always congruent to one in mod p as long as p is prime and the greatest common divisor of a and p is one. 
I hope you found this video helpful in showing you a little bit about Fermat's little theorem. If you did, make sure to give it a like, subscribe also for future math videos so that hopefully it'll help you in your math classes and your understanding of mathematics. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.